Okay, I made a video today just to show you how to make a glitch drum rack, vocal drum rack in Ableton Live. Um, you hear this quite a lot in Tech House and Techno, uh, House as well, Deep House, it's, it's quite a, a popular thing. And there can be quite a lot of work in chopping up little bits of samples, uh, vocal samples, and then sequencing them or putting them in order however you want them to be. Now this is, this is quite an easy way of doing it. So I thought people might be interested to see how it's done. Um, so to start off with, I've got a vocal sample here that I've recorded from a record of an old, it's a, like, old story record of Treasure Island. And it sounds like this. Eight of us left, including O'Brien and Hans, and they're on the boat. Oh, oh, if we go on quiet. like this, we eat them. Pretty cool. You get the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pitch this vocal down a little bit, yeah, to give it more of a deep... Uh, sort of monstrous sound, I suppose. And um, you can leave it as it is, there's no problem with that, but I like to have it, like I say, with this, this deeper tone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag the clip over here to arrangement view. You can press the tab key if that's any easier. Um, go back to arrangement view. And if you play it again, it'll just be exactly the same. Eight of us left. So once we've got the clip into arrangement view, we're going to change the warp mode down here in the sample settings from beats to repitch. And what that does is when we speed up, if we were to change the tempo of the song now, um, if we were to make it faster, the clip would go up in pitch, just like a, how it would do in a record player or a CDJ. Um, and if we went down in tempo, it's going to make the, the pitch of the sound go lower. So I'll give you a demonstration. I just have to put loop on here to start with. That's command and L. Uh, Eight of us left, including O'Brien. So I'll change the tempo, make it go higher. So the pitch will go up. Eight of us left, including O'Brien. I'll change the tempo, make it go down. It should go deeper. Eight of us left, including O'Brien. It sounds pretty good. That's kind of what I want. Okay, near enough. So, what we're going to do to make the, uh, the re-pitch warp mode effect stick, or the sound of the of, uh, the warp mode sort of stay permanent, we've got to consolidate the track, or consolidate the clip. So if we right click and go to consolidate, oh, it's done, yeah? And you'll notice that the warp mode now has gone back to beats here, yeah? Now, what we've got is it says the BPM is set to 76, which it is, when we change it back to 120, which we've just done there, it stays sort of sort of fixed, thinking, oh, um, the clip's supposed to be at 76 beats a minute. I'm going to have to make this clip much shorter for it to play in time with um, any other clips of 120 beats a minute. So this can be a bit of a pest. The pitch stays the same, but the actual words come much quicker. Than what they what they were when they were seventy six beats a minute. So what we do to get around that is simply go down to the BPM and change that to one hundred and twenty. Now then, you've got to make sure that you stretch it back out again, and it should be back to how it was when I played at seventy six beats per minute. So remember to do that. That's quite important. Otherwise, it'll it'll sound hurried. Anyways, so I'm just going to press the tab key now, jump back into clip view, change the name, um, pitch down, low, whatever, and change the color just so I know which one's which. Now, within the uh, clip itself, so if I double tap on the clip, I can see down here. Um, and what we've got is throughout the clip, we've got little transient markers. Okay, now this isn't a really long clip, so it's, it's probably best to use quite short clips because if you're going to use these transient markers um, to cut the clip up, if you have a massive long sample, it's going to, you're going to end up with hundreds and hundreds of little slices. And what Ableton Live does is between each of these slices, it makes like a, a cut. So it's going to cut from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, all right? And it's going to put each of these little individual slices into a drum rack. Now, to do that, well, to do that simply, just right click on your part, go to slice to new MIDI track, 
and we're going to choose transient here yeah? because if you were to put I'll just quickly show you if I was to put my own markers in I wanted to say I wanted to ignore this one in this in the middle here so I'll just go like that now put as many yellow markers wherever I want and um, it would actually ignore this transient marker so these are warp markers these are transient markers okay I'm going to use transients because they're already there and I'm lazy <laughs> Anyway, so slice new MIDI track, we'll change this to transient. You can also change it to divisions of the grid, so half notes, quarter notes, whatever, um, whatever you suit. Uh, leave it to set the built in and press OK. So I get 34 slices, 34 different things. And if we go inside, you can see it's give us a sort of a representation a midi representation of those transients in order and when i played it should ish play the sample back eight of us left including o'brien and hans and they're on the board Ooh, i think yeah this one's playing at the same time try again eight of us left including o'brien and hans so that's actually playing a, a drum rack there, but it's pretty good. But we don't want it to play like, you know, as normal. We just want some little short um, vocal glitchy sounds. So if we go back into, uh, if we could have a look at the drum rack, should I say, that it's put them into, we can see all of our slices here. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to arm the track. <laughs> and play some keys or some drum pads just to, or even your computer keyboard Ooh, need to go a bit higher just to hear what they sound like now then I like change the uh, the envelope of each well, this this envelope controls all of the uh, the slices and it just means that it, it's going to sort of shape the sound of the uh, the sample to be in this case quite short because if I, if I keep sustain down and I hold the, the, the key or the pad down if it's a long sound there uh, it'll it'll play sort of for as long as I press it for now I want it to be quite short so I'm going to turn this right down and even if I hold the pad down for ages it's just going to play a little beep you know but you notice the sound the, the volume's gone down a bit so we're going to put a Blue compressor after this and turn on soft clip, turn it up. There we go. And you can already hear the sort of the sound that I'm talking about, this this little glitchy sound. You do get some other sounds sometimes sound actually like little drum hits. So you get some bonuses in there sometimes. Anyway, uh, we're gonna add a bit of reverb. A little bit of delay. I might add my own delay actually. Put a ping pong delay on and set the filter quite high. I'll knock the sync off. I'll change it to 47 milliseconds. We should get quite a metallic sound. Get I don't quite want that much. That sounds okay. We'll use a touch mark. Um, right, and that's cool. So if you like, you can uh, you can play that through, see what it sounds like. So it sounds okay, but it's, it's obviously you can hear the original sample there. So I'm, I'm just going to take that away. And I'm going to make my own. Now I've got a pre-made simple fold the floor pattern here. I'm just going to turn it down a little bit. And I'm going to use to create a new clip. So in a blank clip space, I'm just going to double tap to make a one bar empty clip. And then I'm going to have a little bit of a feel about, see which sounds I like best, and then I'm going to make a part. Quite like that. 
that one. So I'm going to press play on the clip and I'm going to press MIDI overdub so the clip goes red. At this point, it's going to record whatever I press. What you might find helpful as well if you go to record quantization and set it to 16th note quantization. If you make any little errors, it'll fix them for you. Okay? So here we go. Let's try it out. So Ooh, it's in there. Duplicate the loop to make it twice as long. And I'm going to add a bit a little bit later. It's going to get boring if it just goes around for one bar. There we go. Sounds okay. Right, so if we try it out with the drum pattern again, it should work pretty good. Actually, quite fun the uh, the comp the loop compress and the loop length. Um, if you set a weight, I'll just actually I'll play this by itself. The default setting is zero and one hundred, so loop length zero, loop compress one hundred. What you can do is reduce the size of the loop and then change the loop length. a nice little flipping sound but when you take uh, when you turn the release up you get this sort of like nice uh, drag I suppose and just throw a bit of that in now and again sounds cool yeah. 